My little sister isn't a missing person anymore because something else came home in her place. I know I should have been ecstatic. We barely dared to dream during those silent dinners without Willow. The jarring sound of cutlery echoing through our now too empty house. Conversations seeming pointless without her. Days of torture turned to weeks and Willow was gone. Lost to some place only our terrible imaginations could conjure up. She was dead, but we were ghosts haunting our own house with pale apparitions of ourselves, eating to live and speaking only to fill. That made me jump. <laughs> speaking only to fill the silence. She was colour and the world redrew itself in black and white for the three of us. Life was over. Until it wasn't. The news she was missing had never really caught on outside the walls of our little town. So when the local policeman came to our doorstep, it was without fanfare. On the very first day she vanished, the officer leading the investigation found a small pair of gloves. Her gloves by the treacherous river that wound through the woods. To them, the investigation was over before it even began. No need to alert the press or sully the town with sad posters. The world chugged along without us, utterly unbothered, and we crumbled into a thousand pieces. As the rain-soaked policeman uttered on a Tuesday evening, Willow had returned, found in a patch of woods, smeared with mud and blood and asking to come back to our home. She led the police to this house, and as everyone yelled in unison, she's back! It's what my parents choked out in desperate, relieved sobs. I've never heard fill our house up before. It's what all the paperwork stated, endless days of making sure everything was above board. It seemed I was the only naysayer staring into this girl's eyes and knowing with every fibre of my being that this was not my Willow sitting cross-legged on our family sofa. She looked like her, eerily so, but it was off, it was wrong. Her chin was a little too pointy her gaze a little too cold. She was not my bright, bubbly little sister dressed head to toe in pink. But she said she was. She said it with a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. Eyes which sparkled just a shade or two off Willow's. Her voice was a semitone lower, but that's because it's been two years and voices change, my mother insisted. Her chin length hair now flowed far past her shoulders in that same chocolate hue, a length Willow would gasp at if she saw. This stranger wandered straight into our house, pulled on my sister's two small clothes and played pretend, pulling the strings on everyone but me. The first night was something out of a horror movie, the heaviest sense of dread settling like lead in my stomach. Bile rose into my throat as she skipped into the living room, settling herself in Willow's seat and tugging impatiently at the hem of my sister's favourite dress. I bought it for her on a spontaneous shopping trip, watching her eyes light up at the little sunflowers lining the collar. She'd been giddy, and now a stranger's fingernails dug into the fabric, leaving marks I'd never get rid of. No longer would that little dress smell like Willow because it was going to smell like her. Come to the table, my mother insisted in a too jovial tone, eyes more alight than I'd seen them in years. My father nodded a silent agreement, perhaps a bit more muted than she was, and I had to swallow down my fury, my confusion, I had to. Six eyes bore into mine and the chair scraped as I sat down, and this wasn't my sister. She stared over her plate at me with a hollow smile, eyes devoid of any real emotion. Her fingers drummed on the mahogany, a disjointed rhythm I'd never heard despite sitting across from my sister for nine years. I missed you. Her words were sickly sweet, head tilted slightly to the side. Her gaze felt almost challenging, but my mother's eyes brimmed with tears as she nodded vigorously, fork hanging in midair. Oh, gosh, you wouldn't believe. She gulped her words down, overwhelmed. You've dreamt of a family dinner, haven't you, love? She regarded me almost desperately, fingers trembling. And I had, of course. I'd cried a thousand tears for my baby sister, but the girl, swinging her legs inches from mine, sitting in my sister's clothes, was not the girl I sobbed for. When her foot brushed mine accidentally, thousands of goosebumps erupted over my skin because it was wrong. I'd love to hear where you've been. I dared whisper into the silence. My mother gasped, fork clattering noisily onto her plate. She sucked in a mighty breath and I swore I felt her gaze prickle me. But it was only seconds before her eyes became doe-like, wide and comical. 
I don't want to talk about it, she uttered sadly, looking to my mother for reassurance. Her lip quivered, hands shook. It was almost laughable how overzealous her performance was. And yet my father admonished me, snapping at me to leave while my mother gathered up the intruder in her arms. As I left, she smirked right at me. Nobody believed me. Not on the second day when I walked in and saw her doing perfect cartwheels in the living room, something Willow had been utterly hopeless at. She must have learned, my mother chirped, scrubbing dishes so vigorously I swore she was leaving cracks. Nobody blinked on the third day when she locked herself in the bathroom and claimed to be too sick to head to the station to kickstart the rigorous medical testing. But it was the fourth night that haunted my dreams. I'd largely managed to avoid her. Other than the odd lingering gaze as we crossed paths in the hallway or a wry smile as we brushed shoulders. Until there she was at 2 a.m. standing over me as I slept. I didn't scream, didn't startle her into dropping her soulless smile as she gazed upon me, staring down mere inches from my face, so close I could feel her hot breath on my nose, feel the animosity coming off her in waves. She didn't move when I clocked her, she didn't take a step back or pretend to be doing anything other than pressing her face into mine in the dead of night. Oh, she sounds like a right little twat. I know, what a... Mm, I don't want to say C word. No, <laughs> it's not, it just doesn't feel like the day. No, it's not the day for it. Why are you here? I whispered, and we both knew I meant more than standing in my room. She laughed, a little giggle I'd never heard leave Willow's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is that scary, it's fucking annoying you want to just go, fuck off, mate. Yeah, fucking like, kick her. Kick her in the face. Kick her in the kick face. Kick her in the face! <laughs> yeah. I wanted to come home, silly. Breath tickling my cheek horribly. I swallowed, desperate not to show the fear which was beginning to course through me. You aren't Willow. I gritted my teeth, and only then did she pull back a little, mock her, lining her features. That's a shame, she frowned. You're my favourite big sister. My hands trembled under the covers. And how many sisters have you had? She paused, a slow smile spreading across her face. Oh, lots. I don't think I've ever felt as unsafe in my life as I did in that moment, watching her eyes glimmer with something truly evil, a sick sort of pride. I didn't find my voice for a long time, but when I did, it was small and timid, a shadow of my confidence from only hours earlier. What do you want with us? She thought on it for a moment, tilting her head back and forth as, she, as though the question was funny. Even in the dark, she looked wrong, as though someone had built her to look like my beloved Willow and misremembered her slightly, getting the angles and details wrong. She lay her fingers on my forehead, painfully drumming that same pattern on my skin as all those days ago. Shamefully, I was too scared to move, even as her fingers jammed into my skull. I like your mum, she mused, giggling childishly as she caught her mistake. <laughs> ah, mum. I think she's going to like me more than your sister. But before I could react, she was gone skipping towards the door in the wrong nightclothes, only turning back to casually ruin my life. She's dead, by the way. She murmured into the silent shrugging. It was painful, too. And she left, leaving me aghast as I festered at my blanket, desperately grabbing Willow's teddy bear from beside my bed and clutching it to my chest. I sobbed myself to sleep that night, face buried in her favourite toy and knowing for sure that she was never coming home. It only got worse. <laughs>